to you this morning. Some people in the room were just saying, where's the timer gone? That means we don't have to start when it gets to zero. That's why it's gone. So we can start when we like. Well, good morning. It's great to see you. Uh, it is, uh, well, it's fantastic to be here. Special uh, weekend because uh, we've got the dedication of Hudson this morning. Welcome to lots of Dave and Haley's family uh, and friends and whoever. I don't know who you all are, but you're all at the back there. Welcome to you uh, to Harbour Church. I'm Gareth, one of the ministers here, and I'll be leading our service this morning. Welcome to those at home. Great to see you. I'm looking, which camera should I be looking at? Great to have you with us this morning, joining us online. Lots of people away this morning. It's big church festival. A whole bunch of people are there. So, uh, but uh, our numbers are made up in a sense by all this nice smiling bunch at the back. It's really good uh, to be together. It's really good to be able to worship God together this morning. We're going to be able to uh, spend time celebrating, giving thanks for Hudson. We're going to be breaking bread together later on. Mary Jane is our preacher as well, uh, coming to the end of a series on the Holy Spirit. It's a, it almost looks like we planned it, doesn't it? Pentecost Sunday and teaching on the Holy Spirit. And uh, so it's fantastic that we will be able to do that. Uh, just before we start, a few announcements. There are very few announcements this morning because it's half term and basically nothing is happening in the church this week. But just, uh, just for your information, Steve, uh, I don't know if it's a weekend thing or a day thing, but he was doing an Ironman ultramarathon thing yesterday. I don't know if it continues today. But anyway, if you want to sponsor him, there's a, there's a QR code in here, uh, which you can uh, do that. And also, there's a thing that says KNTV uh, about Mazzy's testimony, but I don't know if, is uh, Dave's testimony up there yet? Is it there yet? Not yet. But there will be Dave talking about Hudson and the whole story of that will be there. It's been recorded, but it hasn't been edited yet. So keep that QR code that says KNTV and you'll be able to uh, have a look and watch uh, Dave. Uh, he's going to give us testimony this morning, but he, he, he doesn't have enough time to this morning to say all that needs to be said. So we've put it onto video and it's going to be there on, the, on, the, uh, on YouTube uh, for you to watch uh, later on that is oh the last announcement it's in the bulletin our fun day will be on the 16th of july if you haven't already picked it up put it in your diary make sure that you are not away if you've got holidays already planned change them and uh, and be here on the 16th we're gonna have a great day uh, planning that for then we're going to uh, we're going to sing together to open with. We're going to sing one of. Well, there's a couple of songs that Dave and Haley have asked us if we can sing this morning. This is one of them, and it talks about the faithfulness of God. And so we're going to sing together. And immediately after that, we're going to be uh, celebrating, dedicating ourselves and Hudson to to God. So let's sing together. Goodness of God. Shall we stand together, those of us that are able? Let's. Uh... Let's stand and give thanks and praise to God. I love you, Lord. Goodness of God. 
you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, oh I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yeah. Great, let's be seated. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Father, we thank you that we can trust you. Father, even though we don't always understand, we know that we can trust. And Father, we pray this morning as we spend this time together that you would just reveal yourself to us, that we would know you more. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Well, I have the uh, joy to invite Dave and Haley and all of the family to come to the front and uh, we are going to, we're going to dedicate ourselves, and we're going to dedicate, uh, well, we're going to dedicate ourselves to bring up Hudson in the ways of God. We're going to give thanks to God for all that he has done in uh, this, the life of this family, and uh, it's been, it's been a journey. <laughs> so... Uh, we want to be really thankful to God for that. You know, this morning, um, this moment of thanks and celebration, you know, Hudson's a longed for and prayed for miracle. And we've been witnesses to the, 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 the path that has been, and it's sometimes been a difficult path for Dave and Haley and for the rest uh, through the last few years and also the last few weeks. And uh, we are thankful to God that we are where we are today. And um, so this morning we're rejoicing together with this family. And, uh, and we are going to dedicate ourselves to bringing up Hudson, them as a family and us as a church in the ways of God. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> infant dedication is not baptism. We believe baptism should follow a person's own decision to follow Jesus. So today, we as, 
as parents and as members of the church and as family and friends show our intention to bring up this child Hudson in the Christian faith. And we also, as a, de- as a church, will declare that, uh, that we will take our part of that process. So in this service of dedication, we give thanks to God, the maker of all things, the giver of life for the creation and birth of Hudson. Parents and congregation are to make a solemn promise that we will endeavor to bring up this child in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, relying on God's help in our work together. We will pray for God's blessing on Hudson, and just as Jesus took children in his arms and blessed them, we will pray God's blessing on Hudson. So, Dave and Haley. I'm expecting the answer we do from you, but I'm also expecting the answer from you. Should we stand together? That would be a good idea, wouldn't it, if you're able to? <coughs> I'm expecting the same answer from you in a moment. Dave and Haley, in presenting this child to the Lord, do you promise, in dependence on divine grace and in partnership with the church, to teach him the truths and duties of the Christian faith? And by prayer, teaching, and example to bring him up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Good. You can join in as well if you want. I think. <laughs> and to all of us, do you as family, friends, members of this church, acknowledge and accept the responsibility together with the parents of teaching and training this child so that being brought up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord He may be led in due time to trust Christ as Saviour and confessing him as Lord in baptism be made a member of his church. We do. I'm going to invite Norman and Lynn to come and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Hudson. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you placed him in such a loving family. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for Haley, Jen, and for Dave. And we pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for George, who is going to be an older brother who will give him guidance as he grows up. We thank you for his four lovely sisters, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with them, that they would give him guidance. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we pray for Hudson's, we pray for his hands, Heavenly Father, that sometime in the future, Lord, that he would be able to reach out with those blessed hands and touch people and pick them up, Lord, whenever they're falling and whenever they're struggling and whenever they're hurting, that Hudson would be able to reach out to them. And there'll come a time in the future, Lord, although he won't understand the word that I will bring, that he will be, it will be read to him and he will understand it for we ask this in Jesus name Amen This portion of scripture which I'm reading now as I say, it will be read at some point as he's grown up, and he will obviously understand it then. But it's from Colossians, chapter 1, verse 9, going through to verse 12. Since the day we heard about you, you have not, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord 
and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Fantastic. I wrote that scripture in my journal this week as I was reading it through. It's possible we'll get some preaching on it in a couple of weeks' time. What a fantastic thing to pray for Hudson, to pray for. Paul prayed for the church. Paul's prayers for the church are just incredible. If you look through and see what he prayed for the churches he wrote to. And uh, it would be great if we would pray then for one another and for ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a Bible. Who shall I give it to? This is for Hudson. But, um, but Grace, you hang on to that. Look after it. And uh, maybe you can read it to him at some point. There we go. We're going to pray and bless Hudson. Shall I try and hold him? Do you think that will... <laughs> I better be quick. <laughs> One of the best things that I get to do is to pray God's blessing on children. And we want to give thanks, don't we? Father, we thank you for Hudson. We thank you that though it's been a difficult path, he is a blessing to all. <laughs> so, Hudson, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and I'll give you back and then we'll be more peaceful <clears throat> fantastic let's give him a clap and uh... Dave's going to share with us some testimony um, Obviously, I said before, there'll be, there'll be more on the, on the KNTV YouTube channel uh, soon, but it's not there yet. Yeah. Um, I'm on a time limit and uh, trying to avoid to waffle, and sometimes I can mix more words. I've written it down, so I'm going to read exactly what I say. So forgive me if it seems like I'm just reading off my iPad. It's just I find it easier doing it this way. So just please hear my heart as I share. To understand how precious Hudson is to us, I want to briefly share some background of our 20 years journeys waiting for him. I've done a longer testimony and more details that will be available on the church email and it will come out the, via the YouTube. I really want to encourage you to go and listen to it. Tim's done a great job, so thank you, Tim. It's fantastic. I, I watched it last night. It was absolutely brilliant. I really appreciate your time. Just to give you a bit of background, myself and Haley, we've been married for nearly 22 years. We had our first son, George, in 2002. And then we went through a heartbreaking journey of secondary infertility for 15 years. After moving to Folkestone from Leicester in 2006, we fostered a little girl, initially being told we were going to adopt her. However, it wasn't to be, and she was reunited with her family, which caused deep upset. We decided to, uh, to proceed with straight adoption. So between 2010 and 2016, we adopted our four girls at different times. Many think adoption is a happily ever after, and sadly the daily reality very often doesn't reflect that. Like any family, we have ups and downs, but more so, but more in ours, so we have to work through their early life trauma, neglect and abuse, as well as their disabilities. Adoption with a child with additional needs is like walking on a road full of joy and grief, looking out for the cars, then being hit, then being hit by a plane every so often. But despite these challenges, God is in it all. We surrender all we have as individuals and parents to him, and he helps us and gives us wisdom, strength, and love to raise these beautiful girls. After Grace was placed with us in 2016, we had given up on having a baby. 
But we got pregnant in the summer of 2019. This pregnancy unfortunately ended in miscarriage and so did another pregnancy in 2020. In 2022, we lost another baby. All were devastating. Excuse me. But the last one simply tore out our hearts. The pain, processing particularly for Haley, was heartbreaking. As she had to go through labor with him, Naming all our boys was really important and part of honoring their lives, Sol, Malachi and Finley. The pain was particularly suffocating and we chose to bury Finley, but in the middle of that pain we clung to God tightly. We never understand why our boys could not stay and why God took them home, but in our pain we were confident and we had the hope that we, that we will be taken home with Jesus when we die and we'll be reunited with our babies and that'll be a glorious reunion. After great loss came great joy. We found out once again we were pregnant on our 21st wedding anniversary last July. We were consumed with joy, but also with a fear of history repeating itself. As soon as we found out, we prayed and asked God to name individuals in our church to ask to walk with us through this pregnancy journey and become prayer warriors. We had a few in Folkestone and others around the country. These individuals supported us, encouraged us, Pray with us and for us through this journey of pregnancy. And we added more as the pregnancy developed. The pregnancy was classed as high risk due to Haley's age and medical history. So we were placed under the care of various specialist teams at the William Harvey Hospital. We absolutely loved and embraced the pregnancy, thanking God each day, asking him to sustain the life inside Haley. We enjoyed documenting the journey and sharing it with so many. It was really special, yet it wasn't without its challenges and upset. Going to that first scan was terrifying, especially for Haley, as she was fearful once again she wouldn't see a heartbeat. But at every scan, Hudson's heartbeat was strong and loud. Glory to God, because it's him alone that creates and sustains life. There were key moments in the pregnancy that we really had to dig deep and have faith, hope, and courage. Haley had the usual screenings in pregnancy. One test, the test for Down syndrome, came back that she had a one in six chance of the baby having Downs. Straight away, I wasn't phased because I knew God had told me previously that Hudson wouldn't have any disabilities. We also prayed against it throughout too. God told me to see it as five in six, that the baby wouldn't have it. During the appointment with the specialist nurse, they told us the results. She used the word, if you continue with the pregnancy, which was absolutely awful and hard to process, as the nurse was so matter of fact about communicating the assumption that we would choose to end our baby's life, which of course we never would. A life is a life regardless of challenges. We agreed to a non-invasion test for Downs, and during that 10 day wait for the results, Haley was quite emotional. But God spoke to her clearly and said, I do the ratios, not the medical professionals. Haley arrived at the point of acceptance of a baby having a disability, if that's what God chose, but also the hope that God was going to work away to show his power to the specialist, and this is what he did. We received a phone call from the confused nurse telling us, but unable to explain that despite having the one in six chance of having Downs, the test that she was convinced would confirm the diagnosis actually came back negative. Praise God, another opportunity to share how God was working. We spent most Tuesdays at the hospital through the whole pregnancy, having checkups and scans and other appointments but we also needed to rush up three times in the last trimester due to bleeding and reduced movement of the baby. On each occasion, I would send out a prayer request to our prayer warriors and have them intercede for us. We would travel to the hospital listening to the song Battle Belongs and wait to be checked each time the baby was fine. During these times, we would pray together and listen to worship music to allow the presence of God to fill our space, to bring peace and allow opportunities to share Jesus with others. Our desire through the whole pregnancy was to glorify God at every opportunity. We shared the miracle that Hudson is, parts of the journey that led him to be being here, and that God was at work making it happen at all times. We had additional scans throughout the pregnancy, and this was really nice. As we got to see Hudson grow, hear his heartbeat, and have more photos to treasure. Scans of Hudson's brain caused concerns. Haley had two MRIs in London to monitor Hudson's brain structure. The specialist told us that Hudson was missing the front section part of his brain vortex and this may be called behavioral issues as he grows maybe affect his eyesight and other development areas this part of his brain structure was monitored and recorded missing from week 20 gestation 
up until and including the day he was born. As we had an ultra scan hours after birth, the specialist neonatal team booked him in for genetic testing uh, because of the findings and an MRI scan. They were convinced we must have a genetic condition which caused this brain vortex to be missing. Bloods were taken the day after and came back negative, hallelujah. He had his MRI scan at four weeks old and that part of the brain that was diagnosed missing was present and operating as it should be. You see, at every turn we were told there's something wrong, we prayed. We believe in God's miracles and we ask for prayer warriors to join us and stand with us against these things. And each time God disproved what we were told medically. Because even though God can and does show, uh, allow the wonders of modern medicine to help, he is always greater and he will always have the final say. At every turn, the enemy tried to take Hudson, to steal our joy, to destroy our hope and future. And later, after his birth, tried to kill him through bacterial meningitis and sepsis at four weeks. Each time, we stood firm and told the enemy we're not having that for our baby boy. The enemy is only trying to take him because he has a future. Hudson has plans for, and big plans of God. His life is valuable and significant to the kingdom. You see, the enemy is only bothered about people who are making a real difference. Those that are serving hard for the Lord, he wants to come and kill, steal, and destroy. Particularly those walking with the Lord, we must always be on guard and aware of his plans, not allowing him to have any kind of foothold in our lives. We were a pretty busy family, and up to Hudson's birth, we were supposed to slow down, but it didn't quite happen that way. It was an endless amount of to-do lists to ensure everything was done and in place for his arrival, and praise God it was. As the weeks followed, the arrival were very much filled with challenges. Haley having COVID after being so careful at the end of the pregnancy, um, she was not able to take anything for her symptoms. It was hard and we didn't know how it would affect her or Hudson, but praise God he did well. Haley also chose to send off for a private test for strep B, as the hospital don't provide this. Praise God as she did as it came back positive, and if not treated during labor, it could have been fatal for Hudson. Haley received antibiotics as a treatment during labor, which prevented Hudson being exposed to it. We were so thankful to reach the end of the pregnancy with Hudson safe and well. We agreed to induction date with our consultant. However, nothing quite happens on the first day of induction. We gave us, it gave us time to stop, spend time together, and just mentally prepare for what was to come. The second day of induction, we made it to the active labor, but we couldn't really feel contractions. Every midwife and doctor came in and assured us and said to Haley that had she had an epidural, as the intense contractions were being recorded on the monitor, usually would make ladies scream in pain. Haley asked God for a pain-free or less pain during labor, allowing her and the labor process, which God obviously gave her. So we enjoyed the process of labor with mild discomfort. The consultant kept coming back in and checking the progress and said that if it continues at this slow rate, in his view, not the midwife, she was quite happy with us, that he would have to perform a C-section. Haley and I had spoken about a C-section and agreed that it'd only be allowed in an emergency. We wanted Hudson to be born the way we chose him to be, and praise God he was. However, the constant threat of a C-section did unsettle Haley, and after the examination recording her to be seven centimeters dilated, she cried out to God and said, God, you can do this, get this baby out. As she said this, she physically felt pulled down the bed. Although she didn't actually move, but within five minutes, she said to the midwife, I need to push which the midwife didn't believe us as she'd just examined her at seven centimeters, but soon realized Haley was fully dilated and actually needed to push. We strongly believe that that act of Haley crying out to the Lord for help saved Hudson's life, as when he did come out, the umbilical cord was tied around his neck tightly twice, and he was purple, so he was restricting his airways. So if left any longer, he would have most likely have died. We, really, we are really blessed our time at the delivery suite the care was outstanding and the midwife that delivered Hudson was a Christian. She loved our chosen worship songs on her playlist and she kept examining them and putting them on her download list to listen to later. All the staff that were involved in Haley's care that came into the delivery room commented on how calm and peaceful the room was and they loved the music. God was at work. Hudson was born on the 18th of March. After 20 years of praying for another birth child, God finally fulfilled his word and gave us our heart's desire. He is a true miracle. As many of you know, Hudson was four weeks old when he was admitted to hospital with two seizures. We rang the ambulance, but after two hours of still waiting, Haley took him to the hospital herself. It was a good job she did, as the consultant said, if he waited any longer, he could have died overnight in his sleep. 
The following day, the information of his blood ink markers were dangerously high at 186. He had bacterial meningitis and sepsis, which was very scary. But I'd had a word from God when Hudson was being born, that Hudson would become ill, but he'd make a full recovery. Hudson and Haley needed to stay in hospital for at least two weeks. This was a big strain on our family, but we have a great family in this church. All, all stepped up and helped us babysit, so I was able to go to work and to visit Haley and Hudson. I know the devil was trying to take Hudson, but God is stronger, and after 16 days in hospital, Haley and I finally brought him home. I just want to say a massive thank you to every single person that prayed and helped us through this pregnancy, the time Hudson was ill, and continue to do so. Please do keep us in your prayers. We very much appreciate your support. There was a Bible verse that kept me through pregnancy in our journey. It's Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I don't understand why God took so long to give us Hudson, but I know God's time is perfect. And it's been a roller coaster of a ride, a real challenge. We still have some appointments to attend in the coming weeks and months to check his health. But God has been with us all through this. It would not have been possible without him. He sustains and keeps us and never leaves us. He's there in the bad and the good. He's there in the big and the small details. All glory belongs to God. We are so thankful for Hudson and excited to watch him grow and see the plans God has for his life. Because although God doesn't promise an easy life for those that choose to follow him, life is much better with God. And I say from personal experience, knowing Jesus personally is the best decision you will ever make. So if you don't yet know Jesus, I encourage you to find out. Come chat with me, come chat with me or Mary Jane or Gareth afterwards. And as a thank you, we provided lots of cakes because everyone knows Harbour Church is Harbour Cake Church. So there's lots of cake and fruit after the service. Please hang around, come and chat and say hi to Hudson. And if you haven't already, uh, thanks for joining us today and being part of our journey. And all glory goes to God. Amen. Wow, what a testimony. There is more, obviously, available. It's going to be uploaded to today, so it will be there, available tonight. So there's a QR code if you want to KNTV in your bulletin. If not, if you Google KNTV, and I've forgotten what you just told me. If you Google KNTV Speaking Life, you'll find the YouTube uh, channel, and there you can watch it. It will be up this evening. Great. We're going to worship God together. This week, um, last weekend, Jim came and cleaned all the carpets in there. And you know what it's like when the carpets are clean, then you notice every little thing. And this week, like when the kids were in a kids club and when after, you know, then you start to notice the stuff, little bits of sugar icing on the floor because they were icing cakes and things like that. And I thought about that and I thought, how often is it that we as individuals when the carpet's not cleaned you don't notice this stuff but once it's cleaned you notice and I thought to myself you know so often in our lives we just carry on in our lives and we don't notice the stuff that needs dealt with we don't notice the sin in our lives. We don't notice the bad habits and the, all the stuff of life just takes over. But you know, the fantastic thing about our faith in all that we do and who we are is that Jesus, the Bible tells us, cleanses us. And uh, as Jim came, and, and if anyone wants a carpet cleaner, go and see Jim. As Jim came and cleaned the carpet, not this Jim, the other Jim, wherever he is back there. Um, you know, Jesus does the same job on our life. He'll clean it. 1, 1 John 1 verse 9 says, uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> I wrote the, the lyrics of a song that I knew when I was young. I'm not going to sing it to you. It says this, I'm clean before my Lord, like a spotless lamb, blameless in his sight, with no trace of wrong left to right. 
And the British says, I've missed the mark, I can't deny it. I don't condone or justify it, but I've done nothing that his blood can't wash away when I take it to the cross and start to pray. So as we begin to worship now, we're going to pray. And uh, Paul writes in Corinthians that we should examine ourselves. And I felt that's a bit like the carpet. Let's have a look. Let's see if there's stuff that needs dealt with. And bring it before him and say, God, forgive me, a sinner. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning as imperfect beings, as sinners. And yet we know that you forgive and cleanse us. So, Father, this morning we come before you and say, God, forgive us. God, cleanse us. Make us clean. Make us holy. Father, forgive us our sin. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, we have so much to rejoice for. We rejoice that we're forgiven and cleansed. We rejoice for the life of Hudson. And I'm sure every one of us could share something this morning that we give thanks to God for. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to worship God together. Maybe you'd like to stand as Dave leads us in singing worship. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. But shout out in praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out in praise. Oh, oh. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. And he rose up from that grave, my God still rolled his stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, we'll shout out in praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet, we'll shout out in praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out in praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out in praise. Shout out in praise. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace, at the house of the Lord's in praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out in praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. A shout out in praise, shout out in praise, oh. I want to scream it out from every mountain toss. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. 
your love amazes me And I'll sing because you are good And I'll dance because you are good And I'll shout because you are good You are good to me, to me And I'll sing because you are good And I'll dance because you are good And I'll shout because you are good you are good to me, to me, you're good. Nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans deep only reflect His truth. And in the darkest night, you shine as bright as day Your love amazes me and I'll sing because you are good And I'll dance because you are good And I'll shout because you are good You are good to me, to me And I'll sing because you are good And I'll dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. You are good to me, to me, you're good. And with a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim, You are good, you are good. In the sun or rain, my life celebrates. You are good, you are good. With a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim. You are good, you are good. In the sun or rain, my life celebrates. You are good, you are good. And I'll sing because you are good, and I'll dance because you are good, and I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me, to me, and I'll sing because. You are good and I'll dance because You are good and I'll shout because You are good, You are good to me, to me You are good Yeah, You are good, You are good, You are good oh. With a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim you are good. You are good. In the sun or the rain, my life celebrates. You are good. You are good. Beholding your beauty is all that I long for To worship you, Jesus, is my sole desire For this very heart you have shaped for your pleasure Purpose to lift your name high Here in surrender, in pure adoration I enter your courts with an offering of praise. Now I am your servant, come to bring you glory, as is fit for the work of your hands. Now unto the Lamb who sits on the throne, be glory and honor and praise. All our creation resounds with the song Worship and praise Him, the Lord of Lord Spirit 
life now living and dwelling within me keep my eyes fixed ever on jesus face let not the things of this world ever sway me i'll run till i finish the race hang on to the lamb who sits on the throne be glory and honor and praise all our creation resounds with the song worship and praise him the lord now unto the lamb who sits on the throne be glory and honor and praise all of eternity echoes the song worship and praise him the lord of the lord holy lord you are holy jesus christ is the Lord holy Lord you are holy Jesus Christ is the Lord holy Lord holy Jesus Christ is the Lord unto the Lamb. Now unto the Lamb who sits on the throne be glory and honor and praise. All our creation resounds with the song worship and praise him the lord now unto the lamb who sits on the throne be glory and honor and praise all of eternity echoes the song worship and praise him the lord of lords Hi. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we've come up as a family and we're going to lead you in communion today as a family. Um, Gareth asked both me and John sort of at the same time like who wanted to do it and we decided we'd, we'd just do it as a family because we as a church are a family and as Dave has so um, well said, you know, we're here for each other, we support each other in the good times and the bad and so yeah, we've come as a family um, to just lead us in sharing communion. Yeah, and I was um, just sort of thinking through what uh, the first communion would have been like, and um, I guess the disciples were all sort of nervous, they were sort of sitting around. They all had their quirks as well, they were all a bit quirky in their own way. You had uh, Peter, who was quite outspoken, you had, um, you know, Thomas, who was a bit of a doubter, and etc., etc., it goes on. And um, you know what? The thing that Jesus um, said to them was, uh, well, let me read it, actually. Uh, so he said, so now I'm, going, I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And you know what? We're not, we're not a perfect family. It would be nice if we were, but we're not, unfortunately. Dan has his crazy moments. Sim definitely has his crazy moments. And, um, and we both do, to be honest, uh, as well. So we're all pretty crazy. Um, but you know what? We love each other. And, um, and God's love 
um, is the glue that binds us all together as well. So you might have come on your own and you might be thinking, well, you know what, I'm not part of a family. Well, you're part of a greater family and, and his love is what binds us all together. So that's what we wanted to focus on today. So uh, I think we're going to, yeah, I'll pass it over. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to pray before we share communion. Um, do you want to say a prayer? Okay. Dear God, I hope you keep everyone safe and, and helping each other. Amen. Do you want to say a prayer? Yes. Dear God, I hope you look at all of us. Amen. Yeah, dear God, we just thank you that we are all one big family. We thank you that no matter our imperfections, no matter what's going on, we are all here for each other and we all have people that we can turn to in those times of crisis and in those times of celebration. And Father, yeah, communion is about sharing and, and we would just want to give you today to just be thankful for our church family as we share the communion. Amen. Okay, so if some of our connect group are going to come up with the younger people as well, with family and children. If you're helping, if you could come, that'd be great. is the battle you see my victory when all I see is the mountain you see the mountain and as I walk through the shadows your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet. Sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing. Impossible for you When all I see are the ashes You see the beauty When all I see is the cross God, you see the empty tomb fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the 
title belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Fantastic. Father, we want to thank you for your great love, your faithfulness. Father, that you fight our battles. Father, the testimony we've heard this morning and our declaration is you are faithful. You're holy. You're just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, fantastic. Kids, you can go to Sunday school. The rest of you can say hello to somebody sitting nearby or something like that. Do you need me to say anything? Hello, there we go. We'll go with this one. 
quite like the yellow one. I like yellow. Not got anything against blue, though. It's fine. We can go with this. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It is good to see you. Um, lovely to see so many friends and family of um, Dave and Hayley here this morning. And I'm Mary Jane, and I'm going to be just sharing with us this morning um, during our service. As Gareth said earlier this morning, um, I'm going to be continuing. And this is like the final in our little series. As a church, we've been looking at the Holy Spirit. We've been learning a bit more about who the Holy Spirit is, and we've been, yeah, on a bit of a journey. And this morning, which is great timing, it is like we planned it, that on Pentecost Sunday, I'm going to bring the last. Now, I say the last. This is the last of kind of our set of four that um, I've been looking at, and I'm hoping at some point we will come again um, to look at a little bit more about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, because that's something that I'd love us to look at as a church. So that will be coming, a little taste of what's to come at some point. But this morning, um, I just want to share a bit about the Holy Spirit. But before I do that, I want to just pray for this time now um, and over the words that I'm going to share. So Father God, just want to commit this time to you. Father, I want to thank you for your word. I thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you choose to speak to us. And Father, I just pray now for the words that I'm going to share. I just pray that your Holy Spirit will just anoint. I pray that your Holy Spirit will just help us each to listen, to hear. And God, that you will speak to each one of us in the way you want to speak to us today. Amen. Amen. So it is Pentecost Sunday. And so we are going to look at that passage. So Pentecost Sunday is, of course, the moment when we remember in Acts chapter 2, that account where the believers are all gathered together. I'm not going to read the whole account. I'm going to summarize this bit and then pick it up later on. So at the beginning of Acts 2, we get the account. The Holy Spirit comes and it describes as roaring like a windstorm. The house is filled and that they are all filled with the Holy Spirit and what looks like tongues of fire are on their heads. And then they all start speaking different languages. And then those around of understanding the language that they're speaking and they're hearing about God. There is this amazing moment, isn't there? But I would like us today to then pick up just after that moment. So we're going to look at, if you've got Bibles, um, you can open up at Acts chapter 2, and we're going to pick up from verse 14. It is going to come on the screen as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Caleb. And I want us to look at this bit. So the Holy Spirit has come, fallen upon the believers. All of this has happened, and then we get this. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. People of Israel, listen. Do you know, Peter here is, he's preaching to the masses. <laughs> this, this is a long passage, but do you know, I've been, I've been sat here this morning going, do I read it all? Do I not read it all? I'm just going to keep going, so bear with me. Because I want to read these words. This is Peter just speaking out to the people that have gathered. So I'm going to keep going. Keep with me. Keep following. He says, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. 
but God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him, I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your holy one to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? What powerful words. It then says, Peter's words pierced their hearts And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter tells them what to do, to repent, to turn to God. It says also, verse 40, then Peter continued preaching for a long time. I wonder how long. That was quite a lengthy preach already, wasn't it, of those words we've read. And then right at the end, verse 41, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. That was quite a lot that I read. I read it for a reason because today we think about Pentecost Sunday, but I want us to think about this part of the story, Peter's proclamation, Peter's preach that he gives And I want to start right at the beginning. If we go back to that verse 14, and actually the NIV version, I'm going to read this. It said right at the start, then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. I love those three things in that translation. He stood up, he raised his voice, he addressed the crowd. Do you know this is Peter? Now, for him to do this is incredible okay because Peter if we think back a bit just over what seven weeks ago just before Jesus died we read of Peter denying Jesus don't we we get this account where we hear of him Jesus is before uh, I think it's the the Caiaphas the high priest and, and Peter's outside and he's in the courtyard isn't he and in with these few little people He's questioned, isn't he? They're like, you were with him, weren't you? You were one of those followers. He's questioned. Hang on a minute, your your accent sounds like him. You were one of them. You were with him. And three different times, Peter said, didn't he? He denied him. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know this man. I don't know him. So Peter, just over seven weeks ago, was there in that moment And now we read of him proclaiming Jesus. Not that long ago, he was denying him. Now he's declaring him. Not that long ago, Peter had separated himself of even being associated with Jesus. But now he's aligning himself with Jesus. Not that long ago, he he didn't want to speak up for Jesus He wanted to more quieten the crowd, the little questions. And now 
He's raising his voice. Peter went from denying Jesus to a small crowd in a courtyard to now (laughs) he's addressing a crowd that brought 3,000 to Jesus. There is this complete transformation in Peter. This complete change in him from denying Jesus to now proclaiming him and declaring him. So what happened? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came. Just before he stood up, raised his voice, we read, don't we, of that Holy Spirit coming upon them. The Holy Spirit had poured out on Peter. The Holy Spirit gave him the power to stand up, to raise his voice and to address the crowd. You know, over the weeks as we've been thinking about the Holy Spirit, we've been looking at different things about how the Holy Spirit is our advocate. The Holy Spirit um, is our teacher. (laughs) The Holy Spirit leads us into truth. The Holy Spirit purifies us, renews us. And this morning, we want to think about how the Holy Spirit empowers us. The Holy Spirit empowers us. And I want to just take us back to some words of Jesus before, just before all of this. So I'm going to flick to a few different verses if I can find them. And I want to just remind us of some of the words of Jesus. His final words, Matthew 28. And lots of these will be familiar to many of us, I'm sure. In Matthew 28, right at the end, We get from verse 18 where it says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I want to also jump to Luke. I'm going to do three different verses for us to look at. Luke 24, some more final words of Jesus, verses 46 to 49. Jesus says this, and he said, Yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. And the last one, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, where he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I just wanted to share those few different verses about Jesus' words because... He says, doesn't he, that they're to wait for the Holy Spirit who will give them power. Power for what? Power to do what they're called to do. Power to go and make disciples. That's what Jesus commissioned the disciples to do. Go, make disciples. Power for the mission. Power for the task in hand. Power to be witnesses We read of that in the words that Jesus says. He says, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit gives power. He enabled the disciples and those first believers to be witnesses in Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. To be a witness. The Holy Spirit empowers to be a witness. It's the same for us too, just as that message was for those first believers. This message is also for us too. We are called to be witnesses to those around us, wherever God has placed us, 
in our workplaces, in our homes, in our families, with our friends, to our neighbours, if we're down the gym, if we're eating cake in the coffee shop, if we're whatever, doing your Zumba class, your Pilates, whatever it might be, wherever God has placed us, where we're serving in church, whether it's here at Kids Club on a Wednesday, whether it's serving the tea and coffee on a Thursday, wherever God's placed us, we're called to be witnesses. That what we say, what we do, how we behave and how we live our lives will reveal Jesus to those around us. In bearing witness, we will enable others to see God. It's so that others can see him and know Jesus for themselves. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about that, that feels a massive task. That's huge, isn't it? Jesus is going, yeah, you, we're called to be witnesses. We're called to go and make disciples. But this is the amazing, beautiful thing of this morning I want us to understand is that it seems a massive task, but Jesus did not expect the believers to do it on their own. He doesn't expect us to do it on our own, on our own strength, on our own ability. But he assures them, doesn't he? Jesus says, wait, wait for the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is going to give you the power that you need in order to be a witness. The Holy Spirit will give you the power you need to go and make disciples, wherever that is. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Spirit to do that. <laughs> I need the Holy Spirit to do that. Do you know these believers were just like us, ordinary people. They would have had their fears, they would have had their uncertainties, they would have had their doubts, they would have questioned their abilities. But Jesus just assures them <laughs> that they don't need to rely on their own ability, but the Holy Spirit will enable them. Just as the Holy Spirit will enable us. When I was having a little look, the Greek word, apparently for power, is dunamis. Dunamis. I'm hoping I, I'm saying it correctly. I have no idea. Oh, look, I'm getting a thumbs up from someone. Brilliant. Must be right. Dunamis, which means strength power, ability. But what I like about this word is that it actually is the root word of some of our English words. And those English words would be dynamite, dynamo, dynamic. Isn't that quite cool? Dynamite. Do you know, when we think about the power of the Holy Spirit, we're not talking like this little trickle here, a little sprinkling. This is a pouring out of a dynamic, dynamite power. This is the power that the Holy Spirit wants to give us. And I really love that. This is the power that we are talking about. And you know, if I had time, we could just sit and read the whole of the book of Acts, but don't worry, we're not, okay? You might be thinking, no, we haven't got time for that. Can I encourage you, though, to go away? As I've just been preparing for this morning, I'm going, actually, I'm just going to sit this coming week and just take some time to just read this book. Let's just read this book of Acts because we just read of the power that the Holy Spirit gives these believers. We read about them. The Holy Spirit just enables them to be that witness. We read of people coming to know Jesus. We read of the good news being spread. We read of miracles. We read of healings, prison doors being flung open. It is an amazing book to read. So can I encourage us? Let's, let's read it. But I want to just really focus in particular about coming back again to this, this bit we start at the beginning with Peter. Peter. And, and his speech, his, his proclamation. Do you know, the Holy Spirit empowered Peter with a boldness to speak, with a confidence to proclaim Jesus. That's the kind of power the Holy Spirit wants to give us, a boldness and a confidence. And I love that you read that. As you read through Acts, you hear a lot of this, this boldness. I'm not going to read all the references, but even just chapter 4 is one that talks about boldness and talking about Peter and John, and they've faced a council, and they've explained what's going on. And verse 13 says this, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. That's quite cool, isn't it? These ordinary men, 
no special training, but they had a boldness. This is the same for us. Later on in the end of that chapter as well, the believers are gathered together again and they pray for this boldness, for this courage. At the end of chapter four, it says, this is their prayer. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. And then it says at the end of verse 31, after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. The Holy Spirit empowers us with a confidence and a boldness to speak. And this morning, I want us to think about us having a confidence and a boldness to speak about our Ebenezer moments. Okay, Ebenezer. I'm not talking about our Scrooge moments, okay? This isn't a, oh, Mary Jane, you want us to speak about when I'm a bit bar humbug? No. That's not what we're talking about. I want to talk about Ebenezer moments. And um, you might be familiar with this. This might be something new to you. It was something new to me that I discovered. got quite excited when I read about this. We have to go back to the Old Testament to understand what I'm talking about with Ebenezer moments. And we go all the way back to 1 Samuel. And 1 Samuel chapter 7 I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but this chapter, if you want to look at it and read it, it starts at the beginning, Samuel is leading the Israelites, and he's led the Israelites into a place of repentance. Um, He said to them, you know, get rid of all your idols, all the things that you're worshipping, brings them to that place, coming back to God. Then we get an account of the Philistines, and the Philistines come to attack. And from verse 10, it talks about how the Philistines arrive And then this is what God does. It says, but the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven that day. And the Philistines were thrown into such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. So God gave them a victory. And then we read this. This is verse 12. This is the key verse. Caleb, I think it's going to be brilliant. Caleb, you're on it. It says here, Samuel then took a large stone and placed it between the towns of Mizpah and Jeshanah. He named it Ebenezer, which means the stone of help. For he said, up to this point, the Lord has helped us. Ebenezer, not Scrooge, we're not thinking about that today, we're thinking about Ebenezer, a Hebrew word that means a stone of help. And I love this story. You know, God did so much for the Israelites. And so often, the Israelites just forgot. They were such a forgetful group of people. Probably sounds a bit familiar. We may be a bit like that. We forget, don't we? And I love this here because Samuel decides, I'm going to do something about this, and gets this stone. Okay, for those of you that saw me coming in this morning thinking, what is she doing? Hence, this is the stones. So I'm, I'm, yeah, oh, Pete's on it already. Wonder, Pete, whether you might be able to. So I thought we need a stone. Now, I don't know what size this stone would have been. I reckon it would have been quite huge. Pete, if you're able to bring it, maybe just put it on the step here would be awesome. I'm wondering if the other one might just go on, would it go on top to just build a little... Whichever combination you think works, you're the one doing it, so I don't mind. Whatever, I'm impressed. Thank you. I'm going to start over here because I don't... It might just go, I think... Yes, well done. Thank you, Pete. Let's round of applause to Pete. Round of applause to Pete. Now, I don't know, but I reckon this stone of Samuel would not have been this piddly little pebble, okay? We're talking a stone. I wonder... I don't know, maybe it was, like, massive, and I just... Those of you that know me know me well, I like a bit of a visual aid, okay? It's just good for us to focus here and just to think, here we go. Samuel put this stone and said to the Israelites, this is a stone, an Ebenezer stone. And he said, this is for us to remember. Every time we look at this, it's a symbol to remind us God has helped us. God has rescued us. God has given us victory. This became a reminder of God's faithfulness. This stone would have been a stone that the Israelites would have said to their children every time they seen it, they would have gone, oh, let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about that time that God, God gave us victory over the Philistines. God did this for us. God did this with us. They would have told their neighbors, 
Every time I saw that stone, let me tell you about this stone. This stone was all about a reminder of how God had helped them to recount God's faithfulness. This stone was a witness to what God had done, a testimony of how he had helped. And this morning, I want to ask, what's your Ebenezer stone? What's your Ebenezer stone? What's your Ebenezer moment? This stone was about a moment when God did what only God could do. What are the moments in your life that are like the only God moments? Where you maybe look back and go, actually, it was, that was God. <laughs> We've heard it this morning already. Dave, thank you. He, Dave and Haley this morning, they've shared their Ebenezer stone with us. They've shared their story of how God has helped them along the way, how God has been with them, how God has worked. Dave talked about the hope that God gave them. He's talked about clinging on to God. He's talked about God working in their lives. This morning, Dave has shown us their Ebenezer stone. It's been a witness of what God has done. And this morning, I just want us to think <laughs> our Ebenezer stones in our lives, our moments of a witness to those around us. They're a witness to who Jesus is. And I want to really encourage us that we would be people <laughs> to share our Ebenezer moments that we will be people to share those only God moments to others. And the beautiful thing of what we've looked at already this morning is you might sit there thinking, ah, that seems really scary. But we have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants to empower each one of us with a boldness and a confidence just like Peter to be able to share our Ebenezer moments. We don't have to do it in our own ability. We don't have to do it in our own strength. You might think, but I'm not sure I've even got the words. That's okay. The Holy Spirit will give you the words at just the right time in just the right way. A boldness to speak, a confidence to speak. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. He wants to fill us with that power to be a witness. How do we do that? He wants to give us a boldness and a confidence to speak about our Ebenezer stones, our Ebenezer moments. Do you know, Peter spoke to a crowd, didn't he? Doesn't need to be to a crowd. He wants to give us the boldness and confidence to speak to maybe the one that we're alongside at the gym to speak to the one that we're sat having coffee and cake with, <laughs> to speak to the one that might be out with our friends and we're sat together somewhere and we're just talking, out for a walk with someone, at work, sat having our lunch, whoever that might be, he wants to give us the boldness and the confidence I need that. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> I wonder if you're the same. Do you know what? I, I look at Peter's confidence and go, wow, I want to I wanna be like that. I want to be able to sit with my friend as I'm eating my cake with them and be able to share my Ebenezer stone, my Ebenezer moment. Do you know, Peter's proclamation was powerful not because it was him, but because it was about Jesus. In what we read in Acts, he was proclaiming Jesus. He was saying, this is what Jesus has done, and I bear witness to that. I've seen it. This is who he is. Do you know, our Ebenezer moments are powerful to share, not because of us, but because they're about God. They're about bearing witness to Jesus. My prayer this morning for myself, and I wonder if this might be a prayer that you would want to join with me. My prayer is, Holy Spirit, fill me 
with confidence and boldness to speak about my Ebenezer moments, to be a witness. I wonder whether that's your prayer as well. That's mine. That is so my prayer, my heart this morning for me, for all of us, that we'll be that kind of church, (laughs) that we will speak, that we will speak with boldness and confidence. And, you know, we're going to take a moment to just respond. I wonder, as I've been talking, some of you might be sat there going, oh, yeah, this is my Ebenezer stone. This is my moment. Maybe you're there going, oh, I'm not too sure. I'm just going to say now, Holy Spirit, remind us, because we're forgetful like those Israelites. Remind us of those moments. Remind us of where, God, you, you've done the work. You've done the work. I'm going to ask if the band can come on up and they're going to start playing. And I want to just allow a bit of a moment to just respond to this. And um, I have got as well, we've got our stone and I've got some post-it notes. And I'm going to get some pens. In fact, I might ask Pete if you could help me again. I'm just rearranging the whole of everything up here. I wonder if we could maybe just have one at maybe each end of the stones. Is that all right? Because I just want to allow a bit of time. The band are going to play. And I just this morning just want to allow a bit of time for us to think about what are your Ebenezer moments? What would be your stone? And I've got some post-it notes down here. I've got some just down here actually, Pete, but feel free to put them on the table for me if you want. Thank you. I swear I need about five pairs of hands. And you might want to take a post-it note and write a word that represents your Ebenezer moment. I've been thinking about my own. Can I say me standing here is an Ebenezer moment? <laughs> Only God has got me doing what I'm doing now. Those of you that know my story, I left teaching. Like I never thought I'd ever leave teaching and be part of leading a church like I just I marvel at God so often and I go God I can't quite believe that you have me here and I don't know how but it's only God (laughs) along the way our story is a story of provision like I came out of teaching oh God has provided massively I'm not going to go through my moments now but but I might on here write provision (laughs) as a word that represents one of my Ebenezer moments but the invitation is that you might want to come, you might want to just write a word that represents and then come and stick it on the stone or around the stone. Stones aren't very good at post-it sticking to it. But you might want to come and just stick it on and almost it's a way of saying, yeah, this is my Ebenezer stone and you're saying, in agreement to the, what I said earlier about that prayer, you're saying, Holy Spirit, fill me with power, fill me with a boldness and a confidence to speak about my Ebenezer moment. It's a way of an act of just saying, yeah, actually, I want to be able to do this. And you might be there thinking, oh, but I'm just me, that's okay. (laughs) The Holy Spirit, it will enable you, will empower you. This is a way of us just saying, yeah, Holy Spirit, give me the boldness, give me the confidence, because I want to speak out about my Ebenezer stone. Doesn't have to be to the crowds, but just to the one. Just to the one. So whilst the band are playing and um, leading us and they might sing, if you want to come, there's no pressure at all. But if you feel like, actually, I want to do this, you might want to come and grab a post-it, grab some pens, write a word on your post-it and stick it on the stone as you're always saying, yeah, Holy Spirit, come and fill me with boldness fill me with confidence so that I can speak about my Ebenezer moment.
worship belongs to our God who sits on the throne and unto the and thanks honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever be to our God forever and ever be to our God forever and ever amen and we the redeemed shall be strong in purpose and unity Declaring aloud Praise and glory Wisdom and thanks Honor and power and strength Be to our God Forever and ever Be to our God Forever and ever be to our God. Forever and ever, Amen. And we, the redeemed, shall be strong in purpose and unity declaring aloud praise and glory wisdom and thanks honor and power and strength be to our God Forever and ever be to our God. Forever and ever be to our God. Forever and ever. Amen. I just want to pray. Father God, I want to thank you for all the Ebenezer moments that you've given each one of us. I want to thank you for those moments where all we could say is, that was God, it's you. I want to thank you, God, for how you help us, for the work you do in our lives. And God, I just want to pray that you will help us. Holy Spirit, fill us and empower us to speak with a boldness, to speak with a confidence, of those moments. Oh, Holy Spirit, that you will just empower us and give us the words. Help us to know that we don't have to rely on our own strength, but it's your power in us, at work in us. I want to pray that over these coming days and weeks, will you, Holy Spirit, remind us of those Ebenezer moments, remind us of those things that we've maybe forgotten and just drop into our mind. Do you remember that time? Do you remember that time? Do you remember that time? And I wanna pray for opportunities. Will you open up opportunities for us to share and to speak? Empower us to be a witness and to declare who you are, Jesus. Amen. I wonder if we could just sing again and and if you're able to, you might wanna stand. I like that verse where it talks about declaring aloud. This is, This is what the Holy Spirit wants to do, empower us to be people that will declare aloud who He is. So let's just stand to our feet. Let's sing this. If you want to come and do a post-it, you're still welcome to. And let's just finish by declaring this. And we, the redeemed, shall be strong 
in purpose and unity declaring aloud praise and glory wisdom and thanks honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever be to our God forever and ever be to our God forever and ever Amen 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 What a great morning we've had together It's been great to be family together Great to hear of what God has done We'd love you to stay, have some tea and coffee, and enjoy the cake. I'm sure we'd all love a bit of cake. I do like cake. So we'd love you to um, yeah, just stay and enjoy time together. If there's anything you would like prayer for, you want to come and just come and find us down the front. We'd love to just pray with you. But I just want to pray for us as we go out from here. Father God, I want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for who you are. And I pray for each one of us as we go out from here today that we will know your blessing over us, that we will know your face shining over us, that we will know that you walk every step, every day alongside us. Amen. Amen. Enjoy some tea and coffee and cake and we'll see you next week.